Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel, Hi Mathematics. Today we have very interesting and tricky question, square root of, square root of 16 minus square root of 12. And a lot of students might be thinking, maybe we can subtract 16 minus 12, as a result we have square root of 4, and to be honest, they go in the wrong direction. So how can we solve this question correctly and step by step? First of all, let's simplify this real quick. Square root of 16 can be easily written as, as 4, yeah? This is our table K, so let's start with that. So square root of 16 can be written as 4, so as a result we have 4. This 12, how can we write, how can we express this 12? We have like three combinations. We have 2 times 6, this is great, I guess, but better option for us is is 4 times 3. You know, we can easily split it and as a result we can find square root of 4. The third option for us is 1 times 12. This is not, uh, not a good option. So as a result, let's choose this second option. 4 times 3. So this square root of 12 we can write as 4 times 3. So minus square root of 4 times 3. And as I said before, according to a basic uh, square root property, I'm going to write this property right here on the bottom. When you have square root of a times b, when you have a product, it's not work with, with addition and subtraction, it works only with division and multiplication. So when you have square root of a times b, we can easily split it like square root of a times square root of b. I really hope you get it. And right now let's split this expression. So as a result, what do we get? Square root of we have 4 minus square root of 4 times square root of square root of 3. I really hope you, you understand it. So equal sign, equal sign right here. Okay, right now square root of 4 equal to 2. This is all known table case. So let's start with that. So square root of 4 minus 2 square root of of three. And right now, what is the main idea? Because right now we can easily see that we can't do, we can't do simplification, we can't simplify it, we have square root of three, we can find it, we have two, we have four, so we can't work with it. But what is the main idea? The main idea is to create a square inside of a square root sign. So what I mean right now, when you have square root of, and inside square root you have a, for example, square. Everyone knows that we can easily cancel these a square root sign and uh, these two as a result we have not a but absolute value of a this is a correct way how can we express it so when you have for example square root of three square you everyone know that we can easily mm, cancel this uh, three and uh, this square root sign and two and as a result we have we have three okay and right now let's use the same logic let's try to create square inside of a, a square root sign how can you do this i'm, I'm going to show you a really interesting trick so instead of this four let's write three plus one okay instead of four we're going to write three plus one so this four can be written as three plus one let's do this so we have three plus one and minus two square root two square root of three so i really hope you you understand it. What we're gonna do next? Right now, let's write this one on the after this uh, on the third position. So on the first position, three. So it change nothing. We can easily um, change position right here. This is not multiplication and division. Yeah. So we have three. The next thing we have minus two square root of three. So this one we're gonna write on the second position. So minus two square root of three and plus one and plus one. And a lot of students ask me why I do this, what we're gonna do uh, right now, what is the main purpose, what is the main idea of doing it. Right now I'm gonna show you two really important tricks. First of all, instead of this three, let's write the next expression. So instead of this three, I'm gonna underline it right here. So instead of this three, we're gonna write square root of three square to the second power. This is equal to three, we change nothing. What are we gonna do with this second expression? We write a uh, square root of one, so we multiply this expression by square root of one, it's also changed nothing, so we have minus the same thing to square root of three and right now I'm gonna multiply it by square root of one. Don't ask me why, in the few seconds you're gonna understand it. So square root of three, we're gonna multiply it by square root of one, it changed nothing because square root of one equal to 1 and 1 times this expression equal to 2 square root of 3. And instead of this one, we're going to write uh, square root of 1 to the second power. Square root of 1 to the second power. Uh, so right now, that's, I'm going to underline what, what I did uh, before. So first of all, I, instead of this 3, I write uh, square root of 3 to the second power. It changed nothing. Second expression, I multiplied by square root of 1. It's also changed nothing. And uh, the, third, the third expression I uh, write with this structure, so square root to the second power, it's also equal to 1. But right now, let's look closely what we have right here. I'm going to write a really important algebra formula. Let's do this right now. I'm going to write it um, on the left side. So we have a minus b square. Okay, I'm going to write this formula. I'm a minus b to the second power. This is equal to a square, a square minus 2ab and plus b square. 
And when I read this formula, a lot of students get it, a lot of students understand why I split it, why I expand this formula, because in the same way, a lot of students might be thinking, Mr. Your expand this expression. It's not the expression that we had in the beginning, so very easy for us, four, four, three, square root, so it's not uh, that hard, but right now you expand it in a, in a difficult way, square root, squares, and right now, mm, here's my answer to, to, to students. First of all, if you look closely at this formula, at this expression, we can easily underline that expression that we have in, in our formula because for example square root of 3 this is our a we have a square for example we have 2 this is really great if this is a square then square root of 3 is our a when b is square root of 1 we can easily use this as square root of 1 so square root of 1 to the second power this is our b square so i really hope you understand it that after this expansion of our expression we get that our formula is also a correct to express our our expression because this is our formula a minus b square a equal to square root of 3 so as a result right here we can write square root of square root of 3 minus b b equal to square root of 1 but we can easily write it as 1 so we have square root of 3 minus 1 to the to the second power and that's uh, this is the main purpose why we, why we do this because right now we can easily cancel our square root sign so from here we can easily cancel it and from here we can easily cancel it as a result this is like the very tricky moment because a lot of students forget about it i as i said before this is equal to absolute value a okay so as a result we need to write that this is equal to absolute value square root of three minus square root of three minus one and right now, how can we work with it? Because we don't need its absolute value. Mm, the main idea is the next one. We need to find out uh, what is this expression. This is if this positive expression or negative expression. Okay, square root of three is greater than one, obviously. Okay, so square root of three is greater than one. So it means that this expression is positive. So we can easily mm, like get rid of these absolute value brackets. So as a result, we have square root of three minus 1. And this is our answer, square root of 3 minus 1. We can't simplify this more. Uh, maybe if you're interested in approximately answer, because a lot of students if you're talking about approximately answer, uh, a lot of students uh, know that uh, square root of 3 is approximately equal to 1.732, if you're talking about that. And uh, of course, if you subtract from here, so if you're talking about approximately answer, uh, this expression square root of 3 minus 1 is approximately equal to 1.732 minus 1, which is equal to 0 0.7. Seven, three, two. So as you can see, after this, uh, after this uh, solution, we can uh, easily find approximately answer. So it's not needed. Uh, for example, if you simplify it on your exam, it's not needed because sometimes you have like square root of five, so you can't uh, know the answer. Maybe you can easily get it when you know approximately answer. So in our case, square root of three and square root of two is the easiest one because, for example, square root of seventeen, you don't know about it. So in our case, you can easily right our approximately approximately answer so let's write our final answer to our question and after this i'm going to give you a few really important hints few really important prompts to this question so square root of 16 square root of 16 minus square root of 12 equal to square root of 3 minus 1 and if it's possible you can write it that this is equal to 0 0.7732 and right now i'm going to give you a few really important moments because in this case a lot of students might be thinking that we need to cancel all the time and we don't need to write these absolute value brackets but just imagine for example um, i'm going to write it right here on the bottom for example imagine you have square root of and you have for example square root of 5 minus uh, square root of 10 let's write something like that to the second power and a lot of students might be thinking okay we need to cancel this square root, uh, square root sign these two and of course you, you 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 can easily do this and as a result they say okay square root of 5 minus square root of 10 because we because we cancel it we can easily solve it like that because um, teachers said that when we have square root of um, for example three square we can easily cancel it and this is absolutely absolutely correct but when you have expression i strongly recommend recommend you to put absolute value brackets okay when you put absolute value brackets the next step you you need to do you need to find out um, the value of this expression like approximately like the sign of this expression positive or negative in our case square root of 5 is less than square root of 10 okay so it means that this expression is a negative so in our case we need to put minus we need to put parentheses square root of 5 minus square root of 10 okay and as a result, we can easily write it as square root of 10 minus square root of 5. And this is a correct 
approach to do this with this principle, with this algorithm. Of course, if you work with the constant, in uh, 99% of cases you can find the square root of a positive integer, so in 99% of cases. But when you have expression, you do know the value of this expression, positive or negative. So put absolute value brackets, and compare this expression, like find out what is the sign of this expression, and then after two more steps, you can get a correct answer, because this is a wrong answer without absolute value brackets. So I really hope you understand my explanation. I really hope you learn something new. Once more, I want to show you this uh, solution to this question. It's not that hard. It's I really like this solution because this is a great uh, algebra question with, with basic algebra steps. We just uh, split it, remember two properties, we just uh, change it all a little bit, and the trickiest moment is right here to see that we can expand it, we can write it, according to this identity. This is like a trickiest moment right here. So if you get this moment, you can be easily be proud of yourself that you, you can easily solve this type of question because there are a lot of these combinations, you know, and when you know this principle, when you know this algorithm, you can easily be proud of yourself that you you know how can you solve it. I really hope you, um, I help you with this video. I really hope you understand my explanation. If you do, you can easily write your question, write your, your assumption down into the comment section, and then let's discuss a little bit about this uh, type of question. And thank you for watching. Wish you all the best in your life. Take care of yourself. Have a great day. See you in the next videos.